State of the art in the automotive industry today is, is AGM sealed lead acid battery. You buy a new car, you're going to get an AGM battery. It used to be uh, uh, liquid electrolyte, then they went to gel batteries. And so all the vents and the things to put water in and stuff like that disappeared. AGM battery is sealed. Um, and uh, it has a vent in it in case it, it overgasses or overcharges and starts discharging. Um, so I found this from Interstate. This is air information. You know, what is an AGM battery? This shows the architecture inside of the battery. I don't know, Dave, you want to bring the lights down? I guess you could, yeah. you know, a little bit easier to see. You guys see it? Okay, so what is an AGM battery? What's the big deal? It's kind of hard to uh, show, but anyway, a lead acid battery has got lead plates and copper plates. And they used to put uh, sulfuric acid in there as the electrolyte. And uh, what happens is, is as you discharge the battery, the lead plate dissolves into the, into the uh, sulfuric acid. So you get uh, lead sulfate. And then when you go to charge the battery, it plates back out on the lead plate. Um, so the electrolyte is carrying a concentration of, of lead in it as well as the, the uh, sulfuric acid. But what they've done now is they put glass uh, mat uh, um, things between them, and that stabilizes the electrolyte. It makes sure the plates are uniformly covered, and the batteries last a long time. Um, and uh, I just have one. I just had to change out. It had been in there for five and a half years. So that's certainly beyond a, uh, a standard automobile battery. If you bought an automobile recently, you're going to have an AGM battery in it. Questions? So AGM starts for glass mat? Yeah. yeah. Absorb glass mat. Absorb glass mat, yeah. So it, it holds the the electrolyte, the fluid, in the fiberglass there and keeps it uniformly against all the plates. So you get a more even discharge um, and uh, 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 contact with the whole plate instead of just parts of it. The uh, problem with a... Uh, what do I have here? Okay, just the fiberglass mesh is what it's talking about. Standard batteries. But a lead acid battery, uh, is only good once you, uh, where do I get it? Depth of discharge. This is lead acid versus uh, lithium. And uh, lithium can withstand 3,500 cycles or more of charging. Uh, a lead acid battery, even AGM, can only handle three to 400 cycles. So that's 10 times the lifetime for a lithium. <clears throat> um, the depth of discharge is a big thing because if you have a, uh, you can discharge lithium from 80 to 90% of their rate of capacity. So if you have a 100 amp hour battery, you can use 90% of the energy in the battery before it, it's uh, uh, diminished where a lead acid is from 50 to 65%. Once it's discharged that far, it doesn't have the power. So even though you get a 100 amp hour lead acid battery, you can only use 50 to 60 amps out of it before it, it, the voltage drops down on it. So the, the lithium gives you, uh, if you, if you have a, a 50 amp hour lithium battery, you probably get just as much use out of it as you would a 100 amp hour on a, on a lead acid battery. Um, they both charge quickly, uh, and the lithium uh, phosphate is, the, is the, uh, uh, the newest technology of lithium, which is what they've all gone to now. But I'm gonna show you the other stuff too. Uh, lithium uh, have a higher nominal voltage uh, without being charged, they're at 13.2 volts. Uh, lead acid is around 12.2, and uh, um, and uh, again, you have more power, uh, but it, re it requires higher voltage charging when you use the, uh, the lithium battery. Question? This is not the charge voltage. This is the maximum uh, fully charged voltage on the battery if you don't have anything connected to it. You say on the, the lithium, it's like plateaus and then it falls. 
It's high. It's high for ninety percent of the right. of the duty cycle, and then it drops. Right. As opposed to the ATM roulette, where it just gradually goes down. Once you've used sixty percent of it, you're already below the rated voltage. You're below twelve volts on the battery. Yeah, that was the other question I had. Because I read that if you go to five or ten, go very close to zero on lithium, you can never recharge it again. That's correct. That's why you have a computer inside of the lithium oh, battery. It shuts itself off. It shuts itself okay. off and protects it. That's part of the the. Uh, the reason that they have that. Okay, so here's the old technology, lithium ion batteries. These are the ones that catch on fire. Okay. I got I got a bomb right there on the table. Okay. So lithium again, you have a lithium is electrode, lithium ion, lithium metallic lithium is actually the electrode. And that's the problem because if you get it into the atmosphere, it'll combine with the oxygen and burn. So a lithium ion battery um, is, is how that works. And, and uh, I, I don't know what the, the uh, anode is. Cathode is, is, is a positive voltage, right? And the anode is a negative voltage anyway. But it has the lithium electrode. Um, and uh, these, you, can, you can still buy these little ones, rechargeable, for your, your AA or AAA batteries. These are 1,800 milliamps, so these are actually two amp hour batteries, even though they're uh, a, a double A size battery. And um, in the older days, they would take a bunch of these because you can run them in banks and uh, build up the amperage that way. So if you want a 100 amp hour battery, you would take uh, at two amps, right? It's going to take, what, 50 of them, right? Uh, well, they, they had bigger cells that were five amp hours or something like that and you get 20 of them in the battery, and uh, they would put them in parallel and series. I'll, I'll try to explain that. But anyway, the point here is the, the, the lithium ion is rated at 3.7 volts per cell. So that's a high voltage. It's one of the reasons they went to it, um, because uh, uh, this is, um, I bought this, when was it? June 30th, 2020, okay? So I bought this one on eBay, and uh, they said lithium ion battery, 12 volt, 3S means it's three cells, 90 amp hour, one kilowatt solar golf cart, RV backup battery, etc. I bought it to make a, uh, a trolling motor battery for my kayak. So this came from a BMW, and they were in uh, San Francisco, these were uh, city-owned cars, and uh, with these batteries, once they cycle them like 2,000 times, they swap out the battery packs in the cars because uh, uh, the, 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 the battery pack may have 2,500 cycles in it or 3,000 cycles, but the rating for the engineers is they swap them out. So this is a, is a cell that I purchased. Um, and uh, it's in actually an alum solid aluminum case. And uh, this is a removable plastic top. If you look here, you can see uh, there's one, two, three, four cells in parallel. One, two, three, four. Those are each of the, in parallel, they're gonna be 3.7 volts. And then here's two and here's two. So there's three cells in there 3.7 volts, 3.7, 3 times 3.7 is what? I'll tell you, it's 11.1, 11 11 .1. okay? So the fully charged voltage on this battery is 11.1. Um, and again, let me show you. Okay, so they were selling it for 12 volts, and I was using it for a trolling motor. So then I had to buy a, uh, a battery management controller board Okay, for a lithium ion battery, and uh, added that inside of the uh, the battery, and this is the uh, diagram of how the, the 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 battery management system works. In those days, you had the charger input, and you had the load output, and you had the common for the battery. And the way they work is when you when you're using them for the load you have the three in series. So, uh, right? 
So these three are in series, one, two, and three, are in series to give me the 11.1 volts, but to charge them, <clears throat> your charge controller, your battery management controller, would supply each one individually. So here's how you charge that, that cell, this is how you charge this cell, that's how you charge that cell. So the difference on the charger is the 3.7 volts or higher, whatever the charging voltage is for those cells. So they charge them in parallel, and when you use the load, you're using it in series. You guys following me? How do they switch between? Magic. It's a computer. <laughs> they use uh, 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 FETs. Uh, they work like a diode. There are these right here. They're, these are these are have glycerin on them, and they, they put them up against this aluminum. It's a heat sink. So these are called these are MOSFETs. So they uh, have all today's batteries are so much stronger than they were just ten years ago. Yeah, I, I've got a, a lithium battery that I use on an impact wrench that will tear the lug right off your tires. Right. And I mean it's so strong. I well, for years I used impact wrenches and service stations. And never has a strength these things have. Well, never because, because again, you got 90% of the rated life of the battery with the lithium, where you only have the nickel cadmium so or the other. Yeah. Is that why they went from 12 to 16, going to 18 to 20? Now they're mostly 20. They're, they're, they're just jerking, around. They could be jerking you around. They're jerking you around, okay? If they had 12 volts, you could use a car battery. Yeah. So I have I have 12 volt versions of those uh, the, the, I bought on eBay instead of the 18 or the 20 volt because you got to use their little batteries. Nickel cadmium, you're not getting lithium. But the lithium you could find 12 volt lithium. Yeah, but then they charge you a ton for that, you know. So again, anyway. So this is another uh, diagram of the same thing where you got the charging in, the input, uh, the output. Here they've got the outputs. And you put the charging and, and the thing in, in common, but you have anyway the charging and the uh, 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 the power are separate, and the batteries are arranged in series. The three cells are arranged in series to give you the top voltage, and then when they're charged, each one is charged at their own different voltage. So that's what the uh, the charger does, the battery protection system. Uh, it also shuts down if the cells are too low. It'll shut down so you don't destroy the cells. You don't take them to zero volts. Once you get 90% consumption, the BMS will turn it off. Also, if you put a high voltage in there, it's going to control the voltage going to the batteries. So you could put 18 volts in the charging side, okay, and the BMS will protect the, the cells inside because you never have direct contact with those on the outside world. Uh, the industry went to lithium iron phosphate, okay? So a lithium iron phosphate cell has 3.2 volts, not 3.7. So you need four cells in a battery to get the voltage rather than the three cells, okay? So the four times 13.2 is gonna be 12.8, right? Yes. Okay. So that's the fully charged voltage <clears throat> on a uh, lithium iron phosphate. And again, that's the standard now that's used. You can't really, uh, I can find the, the used Nissan lithium iron ion batteries on eBay, like I did that BMW one, but you cannot buy a battery that's lithium ion today. It's all, it's all lithium iron phosphate. Um, and so, uh, originally, they didn't have these large capacity cells. They were using, uh, again, 2 amp or 5 amp cells, and they would put them in parallel. Okay, so if I go, well, let me go on. Here's uh, 3.2 volts, 100 amp hours. So this is, 100, this is what your modern 100 amp hour battery looks like inside today. Uh, here's the... Uh, battery management system, and uh, they've also modified them now so that you can charge through the output uh, cables, the same one, so you don't have to have a separate charging uh, plug or port on the battery. And this is the newest stuff that's available today. Um, and it looks like that, or that's pulled out of the pack? 
Now, if you pull the bike case apart, that's what it's going to look like. Okay. The older ones would have the flashlight batteries in there, and they'd have like a row of 10 or 20 of them Wired. all bust together as a single cell, yeah. and you would have multiples of those. That, what that's what that big one there is. It's got multiple cells inside of it. Nice. Okay. But the technology now, they started making the big heavy-duty cells uh, that have the 100 amp-hour capacity, so you only need four of them in the battery. Um so here's the wiring diagram for the battery management system. And uh, again, uh, uh, they're showing, you know, 4.2 volts. Those are, the, I guess, the charging voltage, right? Because it's 3.7 was the, uh, hello, was the running voltage? 3.2. <coughs> so 14.2 is, is a charging voltage per cell. So here's the charging voltage, here's the next charging volts. So you see that's a ground, that's a 4.2, that's 8.4, 12.6, and 16, and that's how you charge. So I guess they're taking 16 volts to charge. Got it? So a, uh, a lithium battery is gonna have a higher charging voltage. Uh, here's, here's an illustration of the way they used to be, where they would take multiple cells and they would actually weld uh, uh, strips on top and, and put them together in groups to make batteries. So that's how they, they, uh, they're in parallel. But as I said, now the modern ones are like this. You know, Herman, even, even your regular marine battery you buy at Walmart, Last now five to six years, even though they only guarantee them two years or one year. Well, they're AGMs. That's what I'm saying. Right. They're not. They're not. Uh, they're not lead acid. Any, they're not just. Yeah. Not liquid extra, electrolyte anymore. No, there's a huge difference. Yeah. Acid. Yeah. Like I said, I just got five years on my car. I had to swap it out, but it's five years old. Well, all the years I own service station when it came out with the Polypro battery. Yeah. Polypro would bend, the plate would touch and blow up. Yeah. They finally got that fixed, but they never die hard, atlas, didn't matter what it was, none of them made it over three years to Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Heat, yeah Two and a half to down. three years was the maximum, that's it. Herman, I got a question. Yes. So in that diagram right there, yes. right, I see the top part where you have the positive little tag, and then you have the positive touch and the negative there. And right. Uh, on the bottom part. Yep. That's going to be the first They're, they're joining the there. I don't know if you can see them. The negative, yeah. And then the other one is going to be positive and the negative, correct? They're joining them together here, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. And then joining there again. Right. right. And then if you if you ran them in, in parallel, you see you could do this whole bank, four or five cells, oh, and you're going to charge them. They're all going to be at the, the 3.6 volts, you know, that, that whole bank. So it's just like putting flashlight batteries in parallel or car batteries in parallel. Uh, they will all be at the same voltage. The problem is uh, with the lithium, when you have three or four cells in series, you can't get equal charge on each bank. And that's why you go to charge it without, without this BMS system, okay, uh, one of those banks wouldn't have the 100% charge on it. This way, each bank it gets the voltage to charge the bank to 100%. Beautiful. And that's what the... It's a balancing, balancing thing. That's what the BMS does. It, it, that's so why this is... With an that's 3.6, and then, then you go from 3.6 to 7.2. So you got 3.6 across this, then you got 3.6 across this one, and 3.6 across that. So you can have batteries in parallel, and they'll all be at 3.6 volts, but each bank will be fully charged at their 3.6 volts. And then when you go to use it for power output, okay, then that's where you get them in series and you get the full, uh, uh, 12, 12 yeah, 12.8 volts. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Um, I just had, uh, my bowl has five batteries. So three of them are 36 volts. Right. And then the other, there's one port dedicated to the engine. And the right. To all the right. Electronics. I, I had a battery 
uh, it lasted maybe, I don't know, not even a year. I took it back to West Marine and they exchanged it. How do I know that the one they gave me back this is a few months ago uh, is uh, modern? The only thing I know to do is check the voltages. And I'll, we'll do a hands-on here, okay? But if you're, if you're overcharging the battery, you're going to eat up the plates. And when you do that, in other words, if you're overcharging it, once it's fully charged, you got to stop, okay? If you keep putting current in there, it's going to blow holes in the plates. Well, most battery currents have a regulator on them, and when it hits the top, yeah, it hits the top. It's supposed to pop. If the regulator is broken, you right. can go through a lot of battery. Right. Herman, someone told me this recently, one of my neighbors, you charge your battery, right? You go plug it, and then the day before you go out, get ready for the motor, plug it in. In other words, you don't need to plug it in all day in the hot sun, because they say that generates a lot of heat. Well, it depends on your charger. Let's, you know, let me let me do that. But I'll, uh, uh, that's the charger with the overcharge. What'd you say, Tom? I, I forgot now. Short term. Uh, I, I was talking about the, the difference in. in with the battery as far as light is concerned. Yeah, no. All right. No, we hit on something else there that was important, but we'll come back to it. It'll come up again. Um, okay, so again, the battery management system, that's it. You see, with a, with a lead-acid battery, your regulator is outside of the battery. It's not an integral part of the battery. Okay, it's on the alternator or the generator. And... Uh, uh, over voltage protection, all of that depends on the external regulator, and the battery is just literally the cells. Okay, here, since you've got this architecture with the series parallel, okay, then the, the BMS is actually the, the regulator. So you can put 18 volts into the battery, and the regulator, the BMS inside, will keep it from overcharging. Once that battery is fully charged, the BMS will disconnect the battery from the input voltage. In your own automotive, you have the regulator and your generator. That's correct. That's what I'm thing. saying. Sorry, and any, any lead-acid battery, it still does. It's not a computer inside of the battery. Here, you get the computer inside of the battery because it keeps you from fully discharging the cells and destroying the battery that way or overcharging the battery. Uh, and, and causing a hazard that way, having a short out or anything else. And it also makes sure that each bank is evenly charged. And your, in your lead acid battery, you got six cells in there that are side by side and connected. If one of those cells is bad, it, it won't hold a charge and the battery won't, won't fill, uh, charge to full capacity. This one, the computer, sets the voltage for each bank and makes sure that it's fully charged on its own, okay? And uh, actually, I use a solar cell, and I was going around, oh my gosh, I need a solar battery generator, you know, interface. No, and the solar cell, without anything connected to it, has 18 volts, but I connected it to the battery because the BMS is inside of the battery. Nice. Why would I put another BMS on the solar cell when there's already a BMS in the battery, it protects the battery inside. So that's Herman's experience. I'm, you know, okay. your mileage may vary, but that's Herman's experience. Yes. So when you buy a lithium charger for your new lithium batteries, it doesn't really have a regulator. It just provides 18 volts. Well, no, it, it, it has some regulation it, because you, you don't want to go over voltage. I mean, if yeah. you put 25 volts in it, you know, you may destroy you the design for 12 volts, yeah. and it's going to provide. Whatever. Okay, so let me just continue to share Herman's experience with you, okay? okay. That, you know. All right, so. Here's, here's a, a lithium 100 amp hour BMS. Okay, it's got the BMS in there. That means you can charge, uh, uh, pull on up to 100 amps out of it. If you try to pull more, it's going to turn it off because it's short circuit protected. Okay? Say that again. The BMS is designed to deliver 100 amps. If you short the battery outside, that BMS will turn the battery off because it's limited to the 100 amps. 
So it's got the, the, the short circuit protection as well as the undercharge and overcharge protection built into the BMS. Nice. So that means if your engine says, or in the old days they used to do 900 amps cranking power, but this is not going to go to 900 That's That's flood. That's playing with numbers. I'll get to okay. that in a minute, okay? <laughs> Let's keep going. keep going. So this is 100 amps. You can pull up to 100 amps out of this battery. It's got 100 amp hours. Um, so that means I can pull 100 amps for one hour, I can pull 50 amps for two hours, I can pull 10 amps for 10 hours. That's how the ratings go. Okay? I can pull one amp for 100 hours. Okay? So if I'm using it to run a fan in my house, the fan draws two amps, I can run that fan for 50 hours before I have to put the solar charger back on the battery to stay cool in the house. Okay? All right, these is suitable for a trolling motor, marine, RV, camping, solar, home off the grid. 200 bucks. Wow, that's it? 200 bucks, that's cheaper than an eight. What's the weight on this? 20, 23 pounds. I got it right there, you can pick it up. We'll do it, hands on in a minute. Okay, here's another one. Okay, these are the, the current prices on uh, Amazon. Is there a big difference between the 50s and the 100s? This is 100 as well. That's still 100. That's yeah, nice. they're all 100 amp hours. I've got the 50 amp hours on my trolling motor. And that's another whole discussion about why using 50 amp hours instead of 100, but that's okay. So, this is 100 amps. How much? $189. They're all in the $200 range. Okay. And they've got the BMS. You got to make sure you got the BMS. And now they're group 24 size, which is. Small. They used to. They used to all be Group 27, which is what that other one is there. I'll show you in a minute. Okay. It was huge because it, I think they had the banks of the of the individual cells. When I bought that, I wasn't going to use it as a starting battery. Okay. I was going to use it as a trolling motor battery or or to power the electronics on the boat. So it didn't matter. Uh, it's just it arrived and it's a Group 27 instead of Group 24. So then you learn. Okay. Group 24 is the regular size uh, current automotive battery. Although now they got Group 56, which is small, shorter as well as small. And your 27 used to be your Cadillac, your Lincoln Continental. Or the, or the big trucks. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's the pricing on Amazon. Um, okay. So then can you use it to crank your motor? Okay. Well... Mercury used to say, no, 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 okay? But here's a uh, uh, starter battery. This, this is lithium, right? I think it's Dakota lithium. Yeah, Dakota lithium. 12 volts, 135 amp hours instead of 100, 100 amp hour. But then they say, oh, it's got 1,000 cold cranking. Why do you need 1,000 amps cold cranking? Okay? This is Herman the engineer. All right. Maybe in cold weather. Is that I don't know. If you dead short the battery, you could get a thousand amps out of it till it till explodes. Okay. So what does the dual part mean? Du oh, starting plus uh, deep cycle. Well, they're they're trying to sell it. You can use it as a starter in your car or on yeah. your boat. Yeah. Okay. They've been they've been poo pooed, and if you read about it, most of the literature is poo poo because they use the FUD to keep you away from using this in a car. And there's reasons because, again, if you overcurrent the thing, the BMS is gonna disconnect it. Okay, so they say, oh, you could run up the side of the road, you know, with the battery turned off. So, you know, you, you, you have to have some respect for what you're doing. And, and also, uh, you saw when they had the cold wave, where was it, in, in Chicago? What happened to all the uh, EV cars? They wouldn't run, right? Because it was too cold. So this is not the lithium battery doesn't have the same temperature range that an AGM battery has. Okay, so they use that as part of the FUD to say you can't use them for starting. What does FUD mean? Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. In Upper Idaho, in this terrible winter, you had the Ford Lightning truck. Yes. And it was terror. It was the worst thing, and he said they were. In it the wouldn't years. go, right? Yeah. It wouldn't go. Yeah. Like, like, cold, super cold weather. Deep charging. My battery says it's deep charging. What does that mean the, for the boat, not for the car? Well, that's a lead acid battery. Okay. Okay. 
All right, so then, you know, everybody's on Mercury's case. Why we can't we use a lithium battery to start the, the engine, right? So then finally, in 2022, they approved what a lithium ion. What technology is that? That's the original one, right? Okay. The 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 rating on a lithium ion battery is eleven point seven. Seven volts, twelve volts. So if you put it in, probably the existing alternator voltage would charge the lithium ion. Okay. So they approved the lithium ion battery. Okay. No, no. R R rel, rel ion, which Mercury owns, is the only one that's approved. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> All right. This, you know. That's the end of trust. But um, wow. so this is their specification on a lithium battery, Mercury's. Okay. So they here they said... Uh, uh, they, you can use lithium iron phosphate, so that's different than the headline. See that? This is on Relion, and they are the ones that are approved for Mercury Marine. So the tank, the specifications on their battery is wow. coal, uh, maximum cranking amps, 800. That's the coal cranking amps. Okay. Well, the Dakota was what, 1,000? We just looked at that. Wasn't that 1,000? Yeah, 1,000. Yeah, Okay. Peak charge acceptance, 165 amps, so you can charge up to 165 amps uh, uh, rate. Maximum alternator size, you can put 150 amp on there. Charge voltage, 4.14.8. Bingo, that's the lithium ion. The lithium iron phosphate, okay? Reserve capacity, okay. Uh, so I think 150 amps, which is what the, the other one was, uh, 135. Okay, so if you're going to use it to start your, your, your boat motor, okay, well then I'm asking myself, how much the current does the starter motor pull? Okay, and so do I have a current rating on the starter motor on my motor? No. I, I, have, I have a Tohatsu 30 horsepower. With a with a lithium battery on it, and I use it to run start the motor and run the trolling motor, and I don't have a generator on the Tohatsu because I retrofitted the starter. But I charge it overnight, I take it out, and I use it to start the motor and also run the trolling motor, and I can fish all day without a problem. That's 80 amp hours. And so I always okay. seen like yesterday that no matter what battery you had, it always went dead. You want yeah. to take the cover off your engine and twist in the tail and then right. get it running. Well, the 30's got a pull cord on it, so in the worst case, if i got to pull the cord, I can. But uh, so I says, all right, you know, let, let's be logical. So here's a starter solenoid relay for Mercury Mariner outboards, right? So what's the relay rated for? Is it rated for 800 amps? What's going to, what would be happening if you put 800 amps through a starter <coughs> relay? Okay, yeah, it would blow up. You'd have sparks everywhere. So here, you see the working current, maximum working current is 80 amps on that starter. So when you go to start that starter motor, it's probably going to take 50 amps, okay, because the, the rating is about half of what, uh, the usage is about half of what the thing is rated for. So you're going to be in the 40 to 50 amp range to get that starter motor turning, and it's going to probably draw 10 to 20 amps once it's actually turning. Okay? So based on the, the solenoid that they use, okay, there's a discrepancy between what they're telling you. You need 800 or 1,000 cold, cold cranking amps. Okay? That's, that's a dead short. You know, the 135 amp hours... 135 amps, 100 amps is, is what you need to start that, <coughs> turn that starter motor and get it turning and start your motor. Now, if I put one of these on my boat, no. I still got a new lead acid battery that I put in there. But I have, on the trolling motors, I use uh, lithium batteries. On, the, on my John boat, I have the 80 amp hour lead acid or lithium battery that I've run both the trolling motor and the other. 
And again, there's no charging from the from the motor when it's, it's running because I charge it when it's in the garage at night. You should take your solar panel out. And charge it. Yeah, it, you know, I can't get out every day of the week. So I can hook the solar panel to it, which is a 50 watt solar panel, okay, which is gonna give me like five amps and five amps over 24 hours is gonna give me, you know, 100 amps, okay? You can go off the grid. Yeah, you can. Okay, so here's what I use, all right? I use, actually I have two amp chargers. These are four amp chargers. So I got rid of the, the, the 50 amp or whatever it was in the boat that it was always wet and shorting out and took it out and I use this. And this, this one will work, uh, it's smart, so it'll work for lead acid or, or uh, lithium, this okay? Will, this will replace the normal ones that are on there now? You this is what I use. I use small because when I go fishing, if I come back four amp hours, four times 24 hours is 100 amps, right? So I can charge the battery over in 24 hour time frame and go out again. And I'm not using the battery to, de de to, to, to uh, depletion anyway. So I use this. This is external from the boat. So I connect them up when I come back from fishing. And uh, if I forget, you know, then that's sort of like not refilling your gas tank, right? And it's $28. Uh, yeah, 28 bucks. Okay. Here's another one, 24, 10 amps. Okay. 10 amps for 24 hours is, is 10 amps for 10 hours is 100 amps. Okay. It's trickle. So once it gets fully charged, so you see this is rated at 14.6. Remember? Remember, that's the charge voltage. On the, the cells are rated at 3.2, and the BMS wants to see 14.6, okay? And if you try to put a lead acid charger on there, it's not gonna have enough voltage. And you may charge the battery to 50%, you may charge it to 20%, you may charge it to, to 90 or 90%, depends. And I had that happen. I go out, and one of my trolling motor batteries wouldn't have a full charge on it because I was using the old lead acid batteries, which were 13.5, not 14.6. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're smart. They'll switch automatically. Okay. Here's another one. Okay. So this one will switch between lithium and lead acid. That's only 21 bucks. Okay. So I use those external. I take them out of the boat when I go fishing so they're not getting soaked and I don't have the plug in there, 110 volts and all that shit, you know, they're out of the boat. And then I hook them back up when I come back. You, you lift the batteries every time? No. no, no, I've got connectors on them. I just plug them in. I'll show you the connectors. Okay. And so, you know, two of them <laughs> is still less than one of those internal chargers that you have on your boat. Yep. Yep. Okay, so trolling motors, this is what I use on my trolling motor. It's a 50 amp. You can't see, but this is a wheelchair size battery. Okay, it's a 10 by 9 by 9. 10 by 9 by 9 and a half. How okay. much for that battery? Huh? How much for that one? 100 bucks. 100 bucks. Okay. So that's half of the. And this, I have a uh, uh, 80 pounds of thrust, 24 volt motor. I run it all day, and I never run these batteries dead. Never, ever. Two, two 12s, you have two of them. Two of them yeah. for 24 volts. So but they're, the two of them are just a little bit bigger than that Group 27 battery right there. And hit, uh, Ken Napolitano, when he rewired my boat, he put in the, uh, the AGM wheelchair batteries. And he knew that even then, and when those batteries went bad, I replaced them with lithium, so I don't have to change them anymore. Those little wheelchair batteries didn't last anywhere near as long as they were. Towers would last. I, I put together a wheelchair for a guy and put those in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they didn't last a year. But these lithiums can go 10 years. Yeah, the lithium will, will have uh, uh, three, 5,000 cycles on them before they give out. Question, so your if, if I have three lead acid, uh, batteries over the trolling motor. Yeah, you could put three of these in. Okay, but the price of this is like uh, lead acid batteries, a few hundred dollars. Yes. So for th for three hundred dollars, 
which would now, now you're singing Herman's song. Yeah. For okay. $300. Now you're singing oh, Herman's you're song. Here. Yeah, that's why you're here. You're that's why I'm doing this. Okay. All right. Or or you can or you can buy the premium. You know, whatever. Five times as much. You know. Well, I've seen they make. This is fourteen. This is a fifteen-pound battery. They make a thirty-six volt lithium, but it's. You, you, you use three of these, use three of these, and then use three of the little chargers, yeah. right? So you can have it pre-rigged up, uh, tie wraps, whatever, you just plug it in and you're good to go? Yeah, I've got the pigtails on it, I'll show you. And your boat will have I, I use a, I use an SAE connector, right? And uh, uh, plug them in that way. Okay, here's, uh, here's trolling motors, okay? So I have a 80-pound uh, trolling motor, 24 volts. The maximum current draw is 56 amps, okay? So they want you to put a 60-amp breaker. There's no way you run that thing on high speed. It's going to be maybe 40 amps total. So a 50-amp-hour battery, again, when you're trolling, you're going to use, you know, 5 amps, okay? When you're down on, you know, 1, 2, whatever. When you're trolling along the shoreline and casting, you're using five amps, you're not using 50, 70 amps. So you can go all day. And Ken taught me that with the 50 amp battery rather than a 100 amp battery, okay? Rather deep cycle, you know, uh, AGM or, or lead acid batteries. I have the old deep cycle, the cost 275 each. Yeah, exactly. That's my second set in the last 10 years. Exactly. Well, you know, so I, I, I would replace I would wind up replacing the batteries every two or three years, you know, and I'd have to buy another set of the uh, of the AGM batteries. So I said last time, I said, well, you know what, I'm going to go, and, and I think mine were like 125 or 140 when I bought them last, yeah. but it was still worth the bucks, you know, and that's going to probably outlast me, you know. And, okay. and the next one up, you got 50 amp hour there that's for 100 bucks. bucks. What's that? A 50 amp hour battery. Yes, for 100 it's bucks. 100 bucks. Right. The 100 amp hour battery is double that. It's yeah. 199. Yeah. Yeah. We that's this. You know, I just got these prices this week. Yeah. Okay. And so, 100 amp hours on that thing. Wow. That's still cheaper than the other batteries. It's cheaper than a than a, an so AGM you can, battery. Yeah, right? You can replace that. You'll get. Two days running all day, every day, before you have to charge. That's correct. And then I use my $20 charger it's more efficient. Yeah, that's, you know, to top it out when I come back and put it in the garage. A $20 charger. Yeah. Well, I use two of them because each one needs a, its a own charger. And you're yeah. getting 90% of the use of this, not 50% of okay. and, and, and in the same way, you're using them in series to get to 24 volts. And you hook the charger up in parallel. Each charger is at 12 volts, so you charge them up individually. Oh, my God. Herman, I've got a question. Yes. So why are the Dakota lithium so much more expensive than your uh, Chinese cheapest in Arizona? Because so much that people Because Dakota's, uh, you know, Dakota's not, I don't know if it's an American brand either, but, you know, it's just sold through distribution. This is uh, straight from China. China.